It is okay. Yeah. We're recording. Yay! All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Well, welcome to the second episode of Tabletop Talk, and we're here with Riley, and we're here with Dan, and um, I've been gaming with these guys for what ten years. So um, you, you guys right. saw Riley in the first episode, and Dan's here today. He's gotten a reprieve and let out of the house, and we're going to be talking about. That's true. Last Day, Zombie Apocalypse, a game of survival horror. And this is also an, from Osprey Games, same place <clears throat> that we did the car game from. And Gaslands. Gaslands, yeah. And this is a zombie survival apocalypse game. And it, it's, it's, it's different from the racing game, but it's similar to another game we're going to be talking about, uh, Burrows and Badgers, where you get a, a war band together, and it does have campaign mode. You go from you move from one stage to the other. Right. Now, the one thing I'm I'm worried about on this game is in Necromunda, they have starvation rules. Yeah. And that's like, why would I want to play a game where my where my war band has the possibility of starving to death? That's like playing The Sims or something. It's like where you just slowly lose. I don't play any game where I don't have the possibility of starving to death. <laughs> But uh, can you start to death in this game? Yeah, uh, well, so there are rules that if you... If, yes and no. If you have enough of your guys are injured, and you go back to your, your shelter, your, your, your honeycomb hideout, and you roll poorly, the zombies will storm your... your, your, uh, your uh, Can you fight them off at that point? Is that a separate that, scenario? That is or the Or is roll. it like you just roll? The roll like, is oh, to see... I just like, came and got you and fuck how many, you. How many yeah. members of your party get eaten by zombies while you're trying to go home? Um, I, I, yeah, I have to reread the rules, but it's basically like the, the <laughs> zombies basically mob your, um, your stronghold, and then if you have guys who are injured, the other people are taking care of them, so they can't protect it. And then you have to go find a new sanctuary, a new, a new honeycomb hmm. right out. Okay. So it's, it, it's not quite that bad though. It's not like, all right, now your characters start with you know d6 wounds or I don't know, I don't remember. Hmm. But Necromunda was pretty bad about that. Um, yeah, because I mean, you, you, it's like with, ne with Necromunda, it's like oh, you start, you know, half of your people have like scabies <laughs> or something like that. It's like starting the game. It's like these guys are awesome. And uh, you're not so awesome. Yeah, like, that, you already have wounds. Yeah, it, and yeah, I remember. Or they, they lost members. I remember. Yeah, it was it was it was a huge detriment. And there'd be that one guy who knew that you were starving, and he was like, "I'm not playing you." Mm -hmm. And it would just lean on you, and mm -hmm. that usually was Dan doing that. Yeah. What did I do? Leaning on the poor guy that got beat up oh. already. Yeah. That's your, that's your strategy, kick them while they're down, because it's a lot easier than kicking them while they're up. Yeah, I mean, when they're down, they're a much bigger target for your feet. That's true. All right. So Dan's basic strategy is, is not whether you win or lose, it's how miserable you make everybody while you play <laughs> yeah. for your own entertainment. So um, he, he's I, like a special wrench in the machine whenever we're playing on campaigns. I also like to use the rules to the full extent. To of madness? Yeah. Create yeah. as much chaos as possible. So yeah. So okay. Probably so the basics the of the game is you start about. off. You uh you 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 set up your your crew, your warband, your you know, whatever you want to call it. Your group. Your group of survivors. You pick out a leader. Uh, the leader has certain characteristics, and then from there you go and you find. Um, I mean, not really minions in this, but other other survivors. Teammates. Teammates. Warbands. All right, so you, you got like you got like lawful people, like law enforcers, like yeah. There are three main factions. Three factions. The first is like they're the good guys, but they're considered the selfless faction. We'll call them the Ricks. The Ricks, yes, yeah, very much the Ricks. And then there's uh, the second faction is the uh, the selfish, and they're kind of cowardly, <coughs> um, and we'll call those the Negans or the Governors. Um, and then the last faction are, are the um, they're like the professionals, and they're they're uh, cops and firefighters, cops, firemen, military, military. and so they're a little bit better trained. But their downside is they won't work with uh, weapons that are Employed. makeshift. Makeshift. Yeah, and, and if if you have any police officer friends, they're always like, I have a standard issue. Yada yada yada. Got to get the standard issue. They never tweak it out, and so that, that that's there's some truth to that. Some truth to that. Uh, so those are the three main factions. 
And then every character have keywords to them, and you you have to make your faction mostly of people with the same keywords. You can have like 25% that are a, a different keyword, and as you play, your hero can like have a talk with them and or your, your leader and bring them over to their keyword. So it's kind of interesting that you could start off with a character, you know, like Rick talks to uh, your Daryl character, and then magically Daryl goes from being a crazy meth head to cool. Seems more like a moral change there. Well, yeah, more like a moral change, moral, yeah. But you get the idea. You, you, you go from being kind of a shady individual to a more of a good guy. Or from a good guy to a shady individual. So it's pretty neat. So you're back in the frank. Oh, sorry. So yeah, the other the other uh, thing, like I said, we kind of talked about the honeycomb hideout. Uh, after you pick out your faction and your guys, you get. Uh, what page are we on? We are on. Eighty. Uh, Sounds about right. Refugee, your refuge. refuge. And your refuge, you know, there are different kinds of refuges and they have different advantages. Uh, they, you know, and they kind of make sense. Like the gun shop, you're going to have advantages for guns, you know, you don't have a farm, you're going to have advantages to farming, things like that. Okay, tell us about the zombies. Okay, so the zombies have the same stats, they don't increase or decrease. The way they work, is so many start on the board, and then as your characters move around the board and do things, they make noise, and every round you make noise checks, and if you fail the noise check, a new zombie comes onto the board, and they go towards your character. So does everybody play in the same party, or is this separate parties that are competing against each other? You would, every every player would have their own party. Okay. And I don't, I didn't really, there weren't any, uh, missions that were cooperative, they all seem to be antagonistic. That would be something cool for an expansion set, like the enemy, I am my enemy. You know, I think, like, I think that's like everybody's favorite, is when the, the villain and the hero team up to fight the worst bad guy. And I think that could be some cool missions they could do in the future. Uh, but as of right now, there's not any mission like that. Okay, now you get some markers over there. Is that like picking yeah. up guns and weapons and armor? And so, stuff, what is that? Yeah, on top of you, so you have your crew, you're going to have like 20 zombies, then you need markers. Uh, for example, I have some that look like little weapons, uh, some that look like little cogs. Um, it's for noise. And the idea, as the characters move around and make noise, you would put the markers by them, and then if you would basically roll to see if they, based on the number of noise counters, if they attract a new zombie. I also have other ones that are like items in the game. You, you're, you're fighting for resources, and so there are items sprinkled throughout the play area, and you're trying to grab them, and there are rules for grabbing them and stuff. So having, you know, um, some counters uh, for that. Yeah, I just grabbed some generic bases, threw on some weapons or some backpacks and whatnot, and that works really well for the, you know, the goodies that you find. Uh, they don't necessarily represent what you'd actually find, but I think it looks cool. Okay, now let's talk about the miniatures. Um, is there a, there's not a specific set of miniatures for these. Uh, I think Oathsworn makes the ones for the <coughs> Burroughs and Badgers game, but um, do, they, do they recommend miniatures, or what do you use? What do I, I know what I use, but I mean, um, you can, I use just like generic zombies from any box set that I got of zombies, and then, like, whatever I got laying around that I want to use, like some space cops or... Those ones look pretty cool. Where'd you get those ones from? Yeah, so they're hassle-free. The guy who wrote the game uh, and the artwork and stuff is hassle-free miniatures, but they say in there, you can use any miniatures you want. There's not official last-day miniatures. So, for example, these are... I got uh, some girl, female survivors... We'll get um, some close-ups of these yeah. later, too. They're originally from War Games Factory. I think it went under, and now it's called something else, but it's called Project Z, is what they're called. And they have a bunch of survivors. They have men and women. Uh, the Zombies, I have from Zombicide. It's a really fun board game. Uh, dual use, so, you know, you can, you can manage that. 
Uh, Reaper makes a lot of cool zombie miniatures. They also make uh, zombie survivors. Games Workshop makes zombies. You know, there's a lot of miniatures out there you can use, and they're all roughly about the same size. And they even have rules in here that tell you roughly what size you want to have, and they talk about scale and stuff. It's it's pretty it's pretty thorough. Are all the bases on your miniatures to scale for what the model size is in the rule book? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's your basic 28 millimeter base, and uh, you, they say to get it basically for everybody. And, and they said you could, if you wanted to, you could have square bases or triangle bases or rectangle or trapezoid, whatever. Just as long as they're roughly the same size. Uh, it's not like the games where your characters are going to be standing in, in rows and marching, so them being able to fit in a certain size isn't really the big deal. The idea, you just want to basically make sure that they can go base to base and fight each other. Alright, cool. We'll go do some, uh, some close-ups and describe some of your figures. Okay. Alright, so Riley, so why don't you tell us a little about, about some of these miniatures you got. Okay, first thing, I, I grabbed some miniatures from a game called Zombicide. And they have a bunch of really funny miniatures. Uh, the Hot Dog Man police officer uh, they also have just regular people uh, that you can use as well they have one that's about a prison escape and there's some so there's prisoner zombies and I found that that's a really cool way that you can get a lot of cool zombies and it works for another game as well zombies zombie sides a really fun game can you explain your your painting techniques on those guys? Yeah, with these, uh, I just want to go with a couple of colors to keep them really simple. You don't want to go too crazy with it, too detailed, because they're going to die a lot, and you're going to want to spend more of your time and your energy on your player, you know, your characters that you're going to play with. But basically, I just primed them black, and then came back and gave them some light green skin. Um, this guy, you can see he's got brown shoes, and then blue jeans, and then a red shirt. And then I have the, the characters that, that you play with and be on your team. These are uh, from a game called uh, uh, Project Z, and these are the female survivors. And uh, there's a lot of different combinations you can use. Here's a lady with a shotgun, uh, a lady in a, a dress. She's got an Uzi and a handgun. Uh, here's a lady with a chainsaw and a cowboy hat. Uh, another lady with a bow and arrow. And then the last one, this one's kind of silly, but she's got a tennis racket. Um, mm. They also make male survivors, and they also make a, a military. It's called Project Z. It's a, a War Games Factory is the company. Uh, but there are a lot of good miniatures out there that you can use for zombies. But those are the ones that I found. They were pretty inexpensive. Okay, now you made some special markers just for this game, some custom markers. Can you tell us about those? Yeah, so one of the things I made were these... Part of the game, you have to have uh, markers for the board. Like, you find items. And so here's an example of one. I just took a, a, a base, and I added a gun to it. Then I primed it, colored the gun up. Uh, silver and then I came back with some browns and greens make it look like it's on the ground you could add flock into it too uh, is that a regular games workshop base or what is that this, oh, flip it upside down the, uh, this is just a generic base but yeah okay. you can use a games workshop base uh, you know game uh, war games factory has a, has on their base save on the bottom but you can use any base for the for the markers uh, here's another uh, for, the other thing I I got some random weird effect um, markers. I think it looked like anything. Uh, I just glued them to the base, painted them up. And, and what is that marker for? Uh, I really decided. The gear marker. I was thinking that that would be like noise or knockdown, you know. Um, I also thought this one I also thought would be good for noise because it looks kind of like an explosion. Uh, this one I had for uh, supplies. And so, part of, a big part of the game is you're supposed to fly these supply to, supplies around when you when you're doing your missions, 
And so having markers like these is really helpful because you know, your characters have to go find stuff. And that's the whole point of a, a zombie apocalypse game is you're finding stuff and killing zombies. All right, well, great. Well, thanks a lot. Um, that's the end of our video. And we'll see you in our next video.